Malaysia is one of the most biodiverse countries in the world. With 60% of its land covered by forests, it's home to thousands of flora and fauna. But iconic species like the Malayan tigers, elephants and orangutans are now critically endangered and could be wiped out in the next 5 to 10 years. What are some of the biggest threats to their survival? And what's being done to preserve these national treasures? It's a race against the clock to treat one of the deadliest predators in the world. This tigress, 18-year-old Hetty, has been in pain for two weeks. And veterinarian Zubaida Kamarudin is doing all she can to help. So kita dah uh, terima laporan yang dia ada masalah pada kelenjar susu dia. So sejak dua minggu lepas, uh, kelenjar susu dia tu uh, bengkak dan juga ada masa dia akan kelihatan berdarah. Dan kita teruskan dengan rawatan yang berkaitan lah. Ha, so pada masa yang sama kita buat ultrasound juga so just untuk check dia punya sistem peranakan dia. The team has little time left before the sedative wears off. Hetty needs to be back in her enclosure before she regains her killer instincts. A shot is given to reverse the anesthesia and the team continues to monitor Hetty. So kita akan tengok tanda-tanda untuk dia sedar. Contohnya, dia akan start uh, masukkan tarik lidah dia. So lidah dia akan mula bergerak, dia punya telinga dia akan mula bergerak, kaki ataupun ekor pun akan mula bergerak. Ha, so biasanya dalam 20 minit ke 30 minit tu dia akan mula angkat kepala dan duduk. Dia akan mula start berjalan. Ha, tu maksudnya kalau kita nampak tanda-tanda yang uh, sikit, makin okey, makin naik tu maksudnya dia punya, uh, dia makin ni lah, makin uh, recover daripada ubat bius yang kita bagi. Hetty lives here at the National Wildlife Rescue Centre, a facility for threatened and rescued animals. It's where they are taken care of, fed and given the necessary treatments to keep them healthy. This centre currently houses 19 tigers, either sent in from zoos across Malaysia, brought in after cases of conflict with villagers or rescued from threats in the wild. Most of them will end up being captive tigers for life, ironically, for their own protection. But is this enough to stop the Malayan tigers from going extinct? The majestic Malayan tiger is one of the most iconic creatures on the planet. It's also Malaysia's national animal, adorned on the country's coat of arms and flying the flag for the peninsula's spectacular array of biodiversity. But while there were thousands of Malayan tigers 50 years ago, only about 150 are in the wild today. And so Malaysian authorities are embarking on an ambitious project to breed and rewild the species. And I want to know how they're doing it. Di sini kita buat pembiakan lah. So proses pembiakan tu, kita buat masa ni kita dah buat untuk empat pair. Empat pair harimau. So far setakat ni kita dah ada satu, dua, tiga kelahiran. Kalau kita mix. So how do you know who matches with who? <laughs> Benda tu memang melibatkan kita ada buat observation dan juga kalau contoh kita akan letak di sebelah-sebelah dan -sebelah, tengok jantan dan betina ni dia akan menunjukkan tanda-tanda yang dia menyukai pasangan tu. Kita lepas juga di eksersasi. So dia boleh bermain bersama-sama, dia boleh kejar uh, mangsa sebab kita ada bagi live feeding. So boleh tengoklah macam mana dia punya combination untuk ambush uh, prey tu. There are also plans to subsequently release the felines back into the wild at a suitable location. Keeping tigers behind bars and breeding them are controversial topics. But it is one way to help the survival of the species. Conservationists argue that the Malayan tiger will still remain threatened because their habitats are rapidly shrinking. And upon release back into the wild, tigers also risk falling victims to poachers and hunters. So even if the breeding program is successful and you manage to increase the number of tigers, how do you then protect them in the wild? Okay, uh, kita jabatan pelitan memang ada gang enforcement. Di memang kita ada unit sepata, memang unit khas untuk buat rondaan di dalam apa taman negara di dalam hutan simpan kita untuk memastikan harimau yang telah kita lepaskan hidup dan juga elak daripada itulah illegal poachers dan mengelakkan daripada konflik dan sebagainya.
But it will take more than government efforts to save these big cats from disappearing forever. I meet with volunteers from MyCat, an alliance of NGOs working towards the recovery of wild tiger populations. I join them for one of their catwalks, a guided surveillance patrol which allows members of the public to be directly involved in protecting tigers and their habitats. With an experienced MyCat leader, we walk through the forest looking for signs of illegal activity like randomly bent trees, which usually means there's a snare or a trap at the end of it. Really bad for wildlife because it's indiscriminate. Anything that sets the trigger gets caught, even if it's not the intended prey. We also learn to spot signs of wildlife like animal footprints. But once we identify a footprint uh, or species, we usually mark it on the GPS and then put all the information there to be tabulated. The collected data is then relayed to the authorities. More than 2,000 volunteers have joined the catwalk patrol since it started in 2010. In total, they've removed more than 250 snares from the Sungayu Ecological Corridor at the National Park. Malayan tiger, you know, is you know, a symbol of, uh, of our country, right? I would like to have that animal still be exists when you know I have children or grandchildren and that animal being you know being in existing in the environment means the habitat is also protected. Pristine undisturbed forests are the ideal habitat for these apex predators but very few countries can afford to devote all their forests exclusively for wildlife conservation. Tigers need a huge area, sometimes up to 200 square kilometers for each individual. So you take that away and you take resources away and they will be probably forced to come out to patrol the edges of their, their home range, to patrol the edges of forests and to come into conflict with people. Regionally, and not so long ago, tigers went extinct from both Bali and Java. So if we don't manage the population well, if we don't manage the threats, then Malaysia will lose our only tiger. It's a stark realisation when it comes to Malaysia's nature conservation that there is no crisis greater than tigers on the brink of extinction. A balance between human development and wildlife conservation must be maintained. And perhaps with the right combination of science, sentiment and strong will, the roars of Malaysia's national icon will continue to echo in the wild. Nina here has very few known predators in the wild, yet she can no longer roam free in the jungles of peninsular Malaysia like she used to, as poaching and deforestation have led to a rise in human-elephant conflict. But there's still hope for these gentle giants, either with a new lease of life in protected nature reserves or a new place to call home here in Kuala Ganda. This is Yong Siput, a seven-month-old baby elephant who was found by villagers in the northern state of Perak last year, all alone, abandoned by her herd. She was eventually rescued by wildlife officers who had found her in bad shape, bitten by wild dogs. Over the last few months, Yong Siput was nursed back to good health at this elephant sanctuary and will now be raised by her new family. The Kuala Ganda National Elephant Conservation Centre in central Malaysia was set up in 1989. It's home to 31 injured or orphan Asian elephants who might struggle to survive in the wild. Like Ellie, the princess of Kuala Ganda. This five-year-old loves eating watermelon just like any other elephant. But unlike her other friends at the centre, Ellie needs a little bit more support. So the most common injury uh, while elephants brought in here is the snare, snare wound injury. Uh, it's the trap. 
So normally it's, uh, they are wounded on their limbs. Yeah, Ellie is one example. Uh, this elephant was uh, found in uh, Jeli, Kelantan, and brought in here because of the snare wound. So her leg is, uh, you can say, almost, almost um, severe, so we amputated it. And right now uh, she's, uh, she's wearing prosthetic. It's so that the elephants have a more normal posture when she walk or when she play. And since she's still growing, so we have to change the prosthetic every six months uh, as she grows. So we will measure the leg and the prosthetic will be made uh, according to the right size. Ellie and Yong Siput have found a safe haven here, but many of their kind are still threatened in the wild. As animal habitats shrink in the name of human development, elephants are forced to search for food and water in agricultural plantations near human settlements. A tragic result of this is the rising human-elephant conflict, leading to injuries and deaths on both sides. Even though the Asian elephant is protected under Malaysia's Wildlife Act, the population of this endangered species is declining. There are now less than 1,100 Asian elephants in all of Peninsular Malaysia, less than one-fifth of its population 30 years ago. Terdapat kawasan-kawasan uh, yang dibuka sebagai ladang-ladang, uh, di mana tempat ini adalah habitat asal di kawasan pinggir hutan, kawasan-kawasan uh, inilah yang akan terdapat konflik di antara uh, manusia dan gajah itu sendiri. Ini menyebabkan kerugian daripada segi kos bila tanaman dimusnahkan, penduduk yang duduk di pinggir-pinggir hutan merasa terancam, so ini menimbulkan konflik. Bila terdapat konflik, uh, pihak jabatan perlu uh, buat sesuatu sama ada kita akan pindahkan gajah tersebut ke habitat yang lebih selamat. But relocating the world's largest mammals can be an enormous task. It's also very dangerous to maneuver an adult Asian elephant, which can grow up to nearly three meters tall. And so special assistance is sometimes required. Who better to coax and gently tug the wild elephants along? Their very own peers, decoy elephants. The decoys are trained here at the Kuala Ganda Sanctuary. These already tamed creatures must undergo extensive training before it can be deployed for a rescue operation. As part of their daily drills, decoy elephants build strength by pulling these heavy logs. Following instructions of the caretakers or mahouts, as they're known. Elephants are known to be highly intelligent animals and through positive reinforcements can learn commands quicker than you'd think. Itu adalah satu simulasi macam mana kita nak tarik gajah liar di dalam hutan. Kita perlu melatih mereka sebab mereka adalah pelapis gajah denak. Semasa nak menarik gajah liar Berat mereka lebih kurang 3 hingga 4 tan. Jadi itulah salah satu cara untuk melatih mereka. Kekuatan stamina mereka supaya biasa menarik sesuatu yang berat. Jadi tempo minimum untuk gajah-gajah di Kuala Ganda menjadi gajah denak dan dikeluar ke, ke operasi, berapa lama tempo tu? Kalau untuk menjinakkan saja setahun, paling kurang 5 tahun. Sebab kita nak betul-betul pasti bila dia dah keluar, dia dah ready. Since the translocation program began in 1974, more than 600 elephants, or half of the current population, have been moved to protected reserves. This has mitigated the number of human-elephant conflicts, as the giants have their own space to roam in the vast national park. But according to some wildlife researchers, you can move an elephant, but you can't make it stay. Disoriented or still in search for food, they are bound to go back towards open spaces or forest fringes where human settlements or new farms are located. 
What's more important, experts say, is to find a way for humans and elephants to coexist. Kesedaran tersebut harus ada pada setiap masyarakat kita agar uh, hidupan liar, khususnya gajah ini, tidak dilihat sebagai ancaman semata-mata. Kita perlu tanam pada diri kita bagaimana untuk kita uh, beradaptasi dengan kehadiran gajah-gajah tersebut. Only 13 countries in Asia still have elephants marching in the wild, and Malaysia is blessed to be one of them. There is no quick fix for human-elephant conflict, but greater awareness, better understanding and simple tolerance could go a long way in holding space for these gentle giants in our world. Mungo Wildlife Centre was established in 1975 within the 653-hectare nature reserve, the oldest forest reserve here in Sarawak. Over the years, the centre has evolved from being solely a rehabilitation centre into a conservation centre for semi-wild orangutans, an education and research hub, as well as an important icon for ecotourism in the state. Nearly 20 minutes later, the leaves rustle and there is movement between the trees. Cautiously, 26-year-old Annalisa makes an appearance. She moves down swiftly and picks up her treats before climbing back up to feed her little one. The onlookers watch in awe. This fascinating species, the Bornean orangutans, are the stars of the Samungo Wildlife Center. They live in this nature reserve located less than an hour away from Sarawak's capital, Kuching. A visit to Samungo is a once-in-a-lifetime experience, a chance to see these beautiful creatures up close, from infants to adults enjoying life in a secure, natural habitat. Uh, it's a very special place. I mean, it's uh, watching them come out of the forest was amazing. Huh? And yeah, it's just really, I mean, it feels like they're still, uh, they're still here in the wild and everything, which is kind of reassuring, yeah? I rasa kagum lah tengok century ni, sebab kawasan hutan dia yang luas, kan? Jadi kita pun, uh, dapat tengok orang hutan yang liar, bukan yang dalam sangka sebelum ni kita tengok dalam zoo. Orangutans can only be found in the lush jungles of Borneo and Sumatra. But like many endangered species, human encroachment and habitat loss threaten their survival. Less than 100,000 Borneo orangutans are in the wild today, with only 2,000 of them in Sarawak. <laughs> Samungo Wildlife Center exists to conserve these animals and their habitat. In the in the early days, it was a rescue center. However, um, over time, it was felt that we essentially need to give these orangutans a chance. There's a, a plan where we actually observe what the animals do, the trees that they reside in, the fruits that they eat on in the forest, and that's the ultimate aim to actually have these animals residing free in the wild. You don't want to be caged, do you? As a result of its success, Samungo's role has evolved. It's now mainly a center to study the behavior of these great apes and to promote ecotourism. The semi-wild orangutans here spend most of their time roaming the forests looking for their favorite fruits. But they occasionally return to the feeding platforms for a free meal. Their diets are managed by these rangers who prepare food for two feeding sessions every day. Here we have a boil egg here, chill boil eggs, okay? Every once a week. And we have a meat here. 
this is mostly we feed for the pregnant uh, mother. And beside that, we have coconut here. Sweet potato there. This is one of our menu. And of course, banana is not missed. The rangers remind me that the food here is just supplementary. Jadi bila waktu pemberian makanan, bagaimana ranger-ranger di sini memanggil orang hutan supaya mereka keluar untuk ke tempat pemberian makanan tu? Ah, dekat sini every ranger is a thousand dekat sini. So semua ranger dekat sini is a thousand. Kita thousand untuk orang hutan. So we just call them using the names. Actually, the loud noise yang kita orang buat ah just to make sure dia orang boleh dengar uh, and dia orang tahu dia orang dah tahu food is already being served at the platform it's now time for the afternoon feeding session park ranger mutadza othman is samango's very own orangutan whisperer He's been feeding them every day for almost two decades now, and he knows all of the 30 orangutans here by name. Win! And win! So we were quite lucky this morning during the feeding session because we managed to see four different orangutans. But it's the afternoon session now, and we've been here about 30 minutes to 45 minutes. And these rangers, they've been calling out for the orangutans, but still no show. And they say it could be because the orangutans have already found enough food for themselves in the jungle. This is a good sign, the rangers say. It means the orangutans have become more independent and are adapting to the wild. Their colony is also slowly increasing too. Annalisa recently gave birth to her fourth baby in January, and the center is awaiting two more arrivals. Conservation success stories are a beacon of hope and proof that we can take great strides in development without trampling on our ecosystem. With time running out fast for some, the tenacity to protect them must be intensified or we may lose them forever.